What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Alpha Street Podcast. Today, we've been kind of going over this, but I think the only really way to describe my guest today is an absolute legend in the sports world. And I know we could have many different ways of calling it that, but I just want to say it for what it is, because, I mean, it sounds like this guy's pretty much basically a meme, uh, you know, a folk legend at this point. I mean, in bars, they're cheering his name all across the country. <laughs> and if you're at NHL, it sounds like you know exactly who this dude is. My guest today, Larry Flowers. Thanks for coming. My boy, thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you on, man, because uh, to be honest, with all the guests here, this is our first time meeting. Yeah. Right? This is our first time meeting. You know, I don't know much about you, except that I just found out literally that you've been all over the NHL, right? Basically, you're pretty much the the logo for the NHL at this point, right? Like <laughs> Michael Jordan and Larry Flowers, right? <laughs> I, I, and that's the goal. Yeah, I mean... It sounds like, well, we're going to have to go into that. I, and, and I, we'll go into that in here in just a sec. But there's a lot to dive in with this guy because, yes, he, he's a legend of sports, but actually this is a badass entrepreneur. When I interview guests, as you guys know, we have a lot of incredible people on the podcast who have done incredible things in business, in sports. It sounds like you've done both, man. So I'm really going to dive into it. But we could talk all about your success and what you accomplished in the jewelry business, you know, in, in any business you venture you, you've taken on. But the one question I want to ask every guest is, I want to find out how the fuck did you get to this point, right? How did you get to this point? What made you who you are today? What's your story? Yeah. So again, first of all, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, very, very exciting. Uh, look, I, I started I started into a new business that I knew very little about with an old partner of mine, a childhood best friend uh, back in Dallas, Texas, in the precious metals business, buying precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, diamonds, and things like that. Um, and over, over the course of so many years, you know, I have a big background in the hockey world. Uh, I grew up playing hockey, obviously. And, you know, I'd have some guys reach out to me, hey, Flowers, can you get me a, you know, a timepiece or can you help me with an engagement ring? And you kind of figure it out. And, you know, over time, the word spreads. But can I, can I just, did you have a access to the hockey world before this business and all that? I did, yeah. So why is that? I, I just, again, I come from a hockey background. My best friends played in the NHL. I knew a lot of guys. There's a space gun. Yeah, I've been in LA for a long time, and, you know, teams would come out to LA and they'd want to go out to nice dinners yeah. and stuff like that. I'd kind of help them out. Um, but again, the hockey community is a, the hockey community is a very tight knit community. Yeah. Probably tighter than the, the, than the other sports, believe it or not. Um, every, everybody kind of knows each other. It, it's an incredible world. Um, and once you can kind of get into that world and you can build, a, and you, you, you've earned your trust within players and guys in the league. Um, they really take you in. And again, yeah, obviously I had a lot of help. I have some amazing friends that helped me, you know, network within the league. Um, but once I did that, um, you know, word spread very quickly, but look, I mean, my, my business career, it wasn't all gravy. It wasn't always great. You know, I, I fell and lost everything. Um, at one point, uh, I had to rebuild myself, which helped me find who I really was as a person, what kind of business I wanted to build. Yeah. Um, based on my values and stuff like that. So it's um, it's really a story of, of, you know, ups and downs and back up. Um, but, you know, as you get older and you, you go through life lessons, things that really teach you that it's not always about business. Um, you know, there, there's a lot more to building a business than just selling a product and making money. Once I really started to figure that out and I wanted to figure out who I really was and who I wanted, you know, people are buying you, right? Right. So, um, yeah, now I'm, I'm in a really good place and I'm, I'm very grateful for it, but... I worked my ass off to get there, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I mean, so tell tell me about on your journey, you're building your business, but so, I mean, because I, I, we didn't really go into detail before this, yeah. and I love to hear the story of what happened when uh, you lost everything. Yeah. Because like I just told you, I, I've just recently gone through that. You know, we just talked to our, uh, our friend yesterday, David Meltzer, right? Yeah. And he talked about how, he, I mean, shit, he lost $100 million business, yeah. right? $100 million went bankrupt. You know, and that's something that is a common thread across people who have gained incredible success. So what happened? Yeah, so my childhood best friend and I, uh, Randy Stern, an, an incredible human being. Uh, we started a, an amazing business. Um, and I'll fast forward several years. We did very, very well. How um, you, by the way? We were, I was, uh, at the time, I was uh, about 34, okay. yeah. 32, 34, something like that. Um, and uh, we built, like I said, an incredible business. And he ran into some hardships personally uh, in his life um, and eventually it led to uh, him passing away, uh, taking his own life, which was, uh, which was devastating in so many ways. He's like my brother. He had a family. Um, mental health is a very serious thing, yeah. um, which obviously our business was completely finished at that point. 
Um, I lost everything. Oh, well, I, we, we lost everything. And I mean, everything, um, everything I worked for built up, uh, gone, yeah. filed bankruptcy, um, literally left California for a year to go back with my family and just kind of reset my mind a little bit. Uh, and that was a really challenging part of my life. Um, but you know, humility, humility is a, is a big part of life and understanding, uh, helps you understand who you are and, and how you want to move forward and how you want to rebuild yourself. Um, and so once I kind of figured that out again, the, the year back home was, was essential to me really figuring out who I was going to be as an adult, um, and what kind of business I wanted to get into as far as, you know, moving forward and rebuilding my brand. Um, but once I did that, um, obviously I had a little bit of, of luck as well, but I think luck has a lot to do in, in all aspects of life. You know, you kind of put yourself in positions, but, um, I was part of a huge story with the St. Louis blues, uh, in the NHL in yeah, 2019. Yeah. And, you know, as I was rebuilding my life and rebuilding my career, um, that happened and, and what it, what it did for me, and we can go into details about the story, but what that did for me was. Um, it helped me not only, I was already dealing with a lot of guys within the NHL players and stuff, which is great. And, yeah. and, um, you know, people would, would, would die to have that opportunity to be that guy. Um, but what it did was it gave me exposure within the outside of the NHL community, I mean, within the hockey world, but outside the NHL community, you know, regular folks that are diehard fans, yeah. um, you know, getting me on podcast, the story that, that I was a part of with the St. Louis blues right. and the play Gloria story, which yeah. is an incredible story. Yeah, but the, you know, it, it helped me get exposure outside of the league uh, nationally, and uh, and I took full advantage of it, and I, I really grinded uh, through all that, and took care of everyone that reached out to me, and everyone gave everyone a lot of attention, and uh, and it paid off. Yeah, well, let me let's go back real quick because there's a lot to unpack with your story. I mean, it's it's unplanned today, obviously, right as we speak, but I actually want to kind of go back to, you know. Uh, you know, when you lost your friend, right? Were you bitter at all? Because for me personally, I, I've actually lost a couple of friends to suicide recently, right? And and I, you know, like they were good friends of mine. They were they were as close as it sounds like you were with with your friend, right? But not only were you close with your friend, but also you know that led to then the collapse of the business and you know all that stuff. Did did that bring out any bitterness at all? Because the way you sounds like what you're talking about it is you don't have any bitterness. But I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts at that time. How how did that make you feel? I do. I did have bitterness. I still do have bitterness. Um, mostly because he was a family man, two little girls, um, and f and for that reason alone, um, a lot of people in our you know on our in our family and um, our friends will probably never get over that. Um, but for those reasons, yeah, I, we were bitter. Um, but I also understand that mental health is a real thing. Um, and so it, 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 it gave me an opportunity to really learn a little bit more about, you know, that, that situation and people that do suffer from mental health. And so you have to be a little bit compassionate about, you know, people and where they are in their lives and what they're going through and look for signs of people that are, you know, maybe asking for help um, without asking for it. Um, it was just, it was a learning experience in so many ways. Um, but mostly about just about life and, and, and the things to look for and, and the things that you want to try to avoid and things that you want to try to aspire to be yeah. and, and the quality of a person that you want to become. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's hard to hear those stories, especially, especially, I mean, I, you know, probably the most tragic of it, piece of it is that he did have a family, you know? Um, and, you know, my friend as well, like, you know, he had a family and I just, it's hard for you to think about those situations, just think like, Why? Or why didn't you talk to me? Or why didn't you say something? Or like, and you know, and you, you know, I guess this is a, this is a, a battle we'll be we'll be talking about forever until as long as someone commits suicide, we'll always question why. Yeah, you know, but you know, I guess that's a battle for you know smarter people. But shit, I mean, that, especially when it ties into the business, I was just curious because you talk yeah. about him like how much you love him and how he's an amazing guy, and like, like man, didn't that bring out any bitterness at all? You know, but it's hard not to totally. So you know, but go talk so me through then like. You have to close down the business, file bankruptcy, and then move back in with your family. Was it with your parents or it was it with me? Yeah. Okay. So you're 34, 35 years old. How am I going to move back in with your parents? How did that feel for you, brother? Because I, I can imagine how, how you know, like, was that just, was it hard to even walk outside? Like, were you embarrassed or what? Yeah, like, uh, we threw that. Yeah. So, um, first of all, I'm a big, big family guy. Um, where I come from, I'm from Northeast Philadelphia, inner city Philadelphia. Um, very tight of the mafia, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I come from a tight knit community. My best friends are all, we're all like brothers. And, um, 
to be honest, going home to me wasn't challenging. Um, really? It wasn't to me. I, I, I thought it was a good opportunity to spend some time with my family. I've been gone you know, ever since going away to college. I've been out of my house since about 18 years old. And even the years before that, I was on the road a ton playing hockey and traveling. And I was always gone. Um, so I, I, I grew up moving around um, quite a bit. Um, but, you know, I, I had been in California for a long time. And I thought it was a good opportunity to go back home and spend time with my family, with which to me is invaluable. Um, I, I love my parents. I love my friends that I grew up with. And so the time back home gave me really an opportunity to um, really just to reset myself, reset my mind. Yeah. Um, it's nice to wake up in the morning and have your mother making you coffee and breakfast <laughs> and stuff like that. That's always good no matter how old you are, I think, right? right yeah, yeah. yeah, so... Um, so yeah, no, uh, it, it wasn't, uh, it, that wasn't a challenging thing for me going home. It was more just rebuilding myself and looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, okay, you're here now, you're living, you're back at your parents' house. This is where your life's taking you. Um, what are you gonna do now? What's your next step? How are you gonna rebuild yourself? Can you rebuild yourself? Where do you wanna end up? Do you wanna end up just maybe getting a job and just having a nice life and, um, and kind of just providing or do you wanna take it to the next level and really rebuild yourself and, and turn yourself into a, a, a positive story? Um, you know, be a part of a, of an incredible business, um, that you're proud of. And, um, and I, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. Mm. And, um, and so I did it and I started one step at a time, one day at a time, just doing the little things and just trying to, you know, take care of myself, stay healthy, mm. uh, keep my mind right. Um, you know, and, and one thing led to another. And then obviously I had a, a little bit of luck with an incredible story right um within the st louis blues organization yeah and that really uh that took me to the next level and i took it and ran i mean i mean i've heard i heard someone describe luck as you know basically just you you you're, you're you're lucky if you're prepared right there's 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 a big there, there oh, there's a better he, he phrased it way better than i'm butchering right now but he basically said luck is is reserved for those who are prepared yeah right because i mean you had to be in that situation you had to be also ready to take action on that situation also had to have the courage to continue on with that situation. And we're going to get to that story in, in a sec, but it's like, I know everyone wants to hear about it, but it's like, you still had to have done all these things to have put yourself back. Because let's be honest, after your, your, your company went bankrupt and you lost everything, had to move with, back in with mom and dad. This is why I love talking to you about your story and you know, talking to my guests, because I'm trying to get inside your head here, right? I'm trying to get inside your head because for me, you know, I lose everything. Number one, the first thing that would come to my mind is like, okay, there's gotta be bitterness. But then I hear you describe your friend. I'm like, I'm like, wow, like this guy's really just, you know, been able to have a, such a positive mentality with that. And then I ask you, you know, was it embarrassing or what was it like? And you're like, no, it was amazing. It was great. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm trying to get inside your mind of what got you to that point. I'm just hearing nothing ever holding you back, no matter what fucking happened. Yeah. Right. No matter what happened, you were always looking to the future. And then, you know, we could talk about Locke, I'm sure, you know, but what if you didn't take all those steps? What if you just went to work, you know, at a regular job, it didn't go on, you would never have had that experience had you not had the courage to continue in the path that you were on. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, you know, luck is an interesting thing. And I, it's, it's fascinating when people, especially when I talk to big name entrepreneurs, you know, like yourself or the athletes, they always talk about luck. I'm like, like, I think we just don't know how to describe exactly what happened, but luck and show it, but the whole journey of you being at that point was clearly preparation yeah i mean look luck luck is we can we can identify luck in so many different ways but the reality of it is it's it's about taking opportunity it's to, taking advantage of your opportunities right. especially when they come to i think everyone has different factors that come into their lives on um, whether they recognize it or not um and it's whether or not they take advantage of those opportunities and 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 i look i was in a part of my life where i know where i want to be i know the life i want to live and so as things progress and things came into my life that some would consider luck, yeah. um, I, I looked at them as opportunities and I, I, I grabbed them with both hands and I ran with it. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about now what most recently, or at least one of the biggest things that just happened. Cause so you, you're back on your feet or at least you're getting back on your feet in business, right? Back in with the NHL. Sounds like the same business, right? So, you know, jewel jewelry and like precious metals and stuff like that. Right. And then 
something big happened. Something. And I don't want to. I don't want to butcher it, but now it does. What what the hell happened with Gloria? Yeah. So this is uh this is a story that's considered by many, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's considered by by many as as the greatest uh, folk legend story within at least the hockey fans, not yeah. guys that actually play in the NHL, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're going Babe Ruth, yeah. Michael Jordan, and then this. Right? I, if that's the order, I'll take it. I don't know if that's really it, yeah. but I'll take it. Yeah, you um, and Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> um, I was um, I was I was back in Philly at the time, and uh, I'm, I have a very close relationship again with so many guys in the NHL, right. and uh, I, I was working mostly and exclusively with guys that play in the league, doing engagement rings, um, luxury timepieces, custom yeah. jewelry, and stuff like that. Um, and, but I have a very, very uh, special relationship at the time with the St. Louis Blues. Uh, one of my best, best friends, Scotty Upshaw, played for them for a few years. And so I got really close with that organization. Um, and so in 2019, they were picked by most sports writers, especially in the NHL, uh, to be a team that will at least contend, if not win the Stanley Cup. Um, and they were just having a brutal year. It was midseason. They were dead last in the NHL, and I mean dead last. And um, that's a hard pull to swallow for a team that's got a lot of really, really good players, and they were built to win this that year. Yeah. Um, and so, anyway, they were, I happened to have been in Philly at the time, and they were coming in to play the Flyers, and it was the same exact uh, – it was the same weekend where the Philadelphia Eagles were playing the Chicago Bears in the playoff game. Okay. So, you know, um, we're on the group chat, me and the boys, and I said, you know, why don't, uh, why don't I put together a, a, a fun little party for everyone to loosen up a little bit, come into South Philly, hang out with some of my friends – and um and give the guys a good night especially some of the young guys and and experience philadelphia in a different in a different way the inner city um and so we we put together a really fun party for the for the playoff game and dj catered food all the italian moms make all their homemade yeah. food and i mean it was proper and uh El Canoli, everything and um and so you know the, those guys were on the way to the bar to meet us and i'm on the group chat and they're they're texting me you know we were in the right spot here we're god boys a little nervous most of them are canadian kids you know so uh i said you're good you're safe with us don't worry um so anyway they show up and they massive welcome and guys were just overwhelmed and it was you know we had a really good time we had a dj playing um and so anyway for the most part i was at the bar hanging out with a couple of my best buddies on the team um, to my right was Alex Steen, who was the assistant captain. He's almost like a captain of the team. He helped put the team together. He's a, he's a legend. And um, and the DJ was playing a song called uh, Gloria by Laura Brannigan, very, very famous song in the 70s. And um, we look over and we see Robbie Fabry, who's one of the best kids. He plays for Detroit Red Wings now. And uh, he's over there having a good time, and he loves the song. And he's young, play Gloria, play Gloria. And Steener and I are looking at each other, and he's kind of he's talking to me about how you know, it's kind of a bummer where they are now and how disappointing it is and you know what are they going to do and we look over at fabs and fabs and uh steiner says to me look at fabs having such a good time there you know what if we win tomorrow night against the flyers i'll play that damn song in the in the locker room and we laughed about it, a little victory song we laughed right. about it and forgot about it yeah and so the night went on and eventually you know it ended and the next night um the st louis blues played the philadelphia flyers um, Jordan Biddington, goalie for the St. Louis Blues, first game ever in the NHL, 3 nothing shutout against the Flyers. And so they go back and they play the song in the locker room and they have fun with it. Right. And they're sending me the videos and, you know, privately and stuff. Yeah. And uh, we laugh it off. And then the next game they play and then they win again. And then they're playing the song again in the locker room. And then they play again and win again. And then they go, there's a little break in the NHL during, um, during uh, the, uh, just like a break. Like it wasn't the All Star game, but it was a break. Um, and so, we all, a bunch of us, went over to Cabo, guys, myself, and a couple of the Blues guys. And then when they got back, back into uh, full swing again, they went on a 10-game win streak, which is very, very hard to do in the NHL. Yeah. And they're slowly climbing out of the cellar. And um, little by little, they're 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 getting better, and they're getting their they're getting you know their legs under them, and they squeak into the playoffs, and they go on an unbelievable run where this play Gloria theme starts to explode. And, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be invited onto a, a podcast called Spit and Chicklets. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest sports podcasts in the world and yeah. the biggest in the, in the hockey world. And um, a friends of mine are, are the hosts of the show. And um, so they brought me on and I, I told the story and the story explodes. Yeah. And uh, now it's becoming a thing where in this, you know, in St. Louis that, um, at, at Enterprise Center, they're playing it on the on the Jumbotron and they're playing it, their videos, it's Instagram, it, it's getting everywhere and it, be, it begins to get national notoriety, uh, especially through the playoffs. 
and they they get into the Stanley Cup Finals against the Boston Bruins, and this is now a full full scale story. Yeah. Play Gloria. That's the theme of of the of the Stanley Cup Finals, at least for the Blues. Yeah. And um, you know, I'm going back and forth to the games, and they get to Game Seven, which is this, that's it, winner take all for the Stanley Cup, yeah. greatest trophy in the world. Um, and uh, the St. Louis Blues, they put a beating on the on the Bruins that night. Game Seven, they won the Stanley Cup. They brought me down to the ice, only guy not on the team. Um, they they gave me the privilege of, of hoisting the Stanley Cup, which you're not supposed to do. Uh, you're really only players are supposed to do that. But you know, I had a bunch of guys say, "No, we want you to be a part of this." And yeah. Uh, so I have some incredible pictures there, and followed by back to St. Louis, they put me in uh, in the parade, and I was I shared a floor with Robert Bortuzzo, a defenseman for the Blues, one of my best buddies, um, and that at that experience was 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 incredible. And towards the end of of the parade, we all go under the arch in St. Louis, and um, there's a stage there, and there's about one and a half million people looking at, out to the stage, and that's where the team goes, just the team. And, uh, you know, they have fun with their Stanley Cup parade. Right. That's the end of it. And uh, I'm walking up the steps and I stop. I say, okay, this, that's about it for me. Like, this has been an incredible run, but you boys go yeah. enjoy yourselves. Go enjoy your teammates. Right. Um, enjoy the moment. And uh, Steiner grabs me right by the shirt. And he looks me dead in the eye. He said, Flowers, you're one of us. You're with us. And he grabs me and he pulls me on the stage. And I went and had a few drinks and we were having a good time. And um, I got one of the best pictures I'll ever take in my life from behind holding hoisting the cup in front of one and a half million people and um I'm so sick. followed by real quick followed by we go on a private jet the whole team we fly out to vegas they meet they make me a part of the entire experience from a to z and um and that that story literally um it, it changed my life mm -hmm. it gave me it gave a lot of people that didn't otherwise know who i was um they, they they learned who I was through the obviously the podcast, but yeah. through the stories and through the media and stuff like that. And so uh, that took my it, it took my business from being mostly catering to the, the athletes yeah. to gaining God knows how many new clients, people from all over the country that know who I am, that want to do business with me and learn my story. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that that literally a few years after the darkest days of my life, mm. um, that happened, which is one in a billion. I mean, if they lose game seven, yeah. it's over. The story's a cool story. Yeah. But this this became you know, an iconic story. Yeah. I'll probably uh I'll probably never buy a beer again in St. Louis. Yeah. Um <laughs> but it it was an incredible story that I'm honored and privileged to have been a part of and it changed my life. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, that is so cool. I mean, they're gonna do a thirty for thirty on you or something like that. Have they already talked to you about it? No, no, not yet. Bulk. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are talking to me about a bunch of different things. Oh, I done nothing. There, there's no way they're not gonna do a thirty for thirty on that. If that's what that is, I mean they they did a thirty for thirty on the guy in the in baseball who like reached out to grab it, you know, on the outfield. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm talking about? No, they're gonna they have to do one of those for you. Maybe, maybe we'll see. That'd be sick. That would be. I can't wait to see that come out one day. Yeah, that would be that would be incredible, yeah. So now that's actually led to you. I mean, because I, I assume you had a big business before. You were do, dealing with a lot of NHL players, you know, obviously in the jewelry business. But now, you know, based on what you just told me, is that it's the second largest inventory in all of Los Angeles for fine uh, jewelry. Yeah, oh, it, what? I, I've put together I put together an incredible team. We have an incredible inventory. We sell obviously end users. A lot of dealers from all over the country buy from us as well. Um, the business that I built. Uh, not only with timepieces, because you can go online, you can find any dealer anywhere in the country that might or may not have inventory. But we have, when you don't have the inventory, you don't have the power. You guys can source watches all day long, but we have an incredible inventory. And uh, so we have a lot of power. Uh, but also what the business I've built is based on making sure my clients know that they're getting the best price on market guaranteed. I think that's very, very important for me. Um, also, when it comes to engagement rings, for example, I do a lot of engagement rings. Um, I've built a business based on providing my clients the absolute best diamonds, desirable diamonds on market for their budgets. Um, there's a lot more to diamonds than just color or clarity and, and things, you know, surface things that, that most people, you know, know about. There's the measurements, the make, the materials, where, you know, where the, where the stones get mined from. There's a lot of very important information that goes into making sure you're buying a smart diamond. Um, and I do all of that as straight wholesale. Uh, basically, I built a business where I, I want to. I, I, I'm basically selling myself, right? Um, I, I learned through this whole reawakening. Uh, I, I've learned that business is not really all about selling something and making money. It's about providing a service. Um, and when you provide a service, something that makes someone feel like 
not only did I get what I wanted, but um, I was taken care of properly. Uh, I, I paid the right price. I, I wasn't gouged. I was taking care of like family, which is how I operate my business. I always tell my clients, you know, I, I sell to people that I don't know the same thing I would sell my best friends. I don't negotiate my prices because I know I'm giving you the right price, the fairest price. I'm giving you the best product yeah. uh, for your for your money. Um, and, and that's also something that I, that I learned in my business. Not negotiating is actually a very powerful tool. Um, when, you, when you're willing to negotiate, um, especially big numbers, um, sometimes there's a thought in someone's mind as consumer that, hey, well, if he's willing to negotiate, if he's, if he's promoting, um, you know, Valentine's Day, 40% off sales, then, then what am I paying for during the regular year, during the rest of the year? I mean, right. I, I don't believe in gimmicky sales. I, I, I just don't. I never have. I believe in treating people the right way all year long uh, and, again, providing them the best quality for their money. Yeah. And, um, and, when, and when, when a client says to me, you know, hey, I'll give you this much for it, uh, respectfully, when I decline, they usually come back because they understand, look, I tell them, um, I've built a business based on trust. Yeah. Trust is everything in business. It truly is. Um, and, and I'm really proud of the trust that I've, I've built, not only within my friends and, and the hockey community, but with new clients and people that I get to meet. And so my whole motto is usually, I, I always tell people, I like to hit singles and I ask for referrals in return and it's worked out really well for me. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, so you're probably the perfect person to talk about this to uh, then or, the, or at least ask is I was saying recently, Rolex has outperformed gold and right. many other things over the last, what, 100 years? It's crazy. I saw the articles. Yeah, you saw that? Of course. Now, because you've been in the gold and the silver and the, you know, precious metals business, right? And the fact that a watch is, out, is performing as an asset, as an investment, because I want to stop like business, right? As an asset is outperforming even something like gold or silver. A lot of people make the case of diamonds, right? Because- there's the argument that diamonds now that they can like, you know, uh, there's more diamonds out there than people will say. I, I, you know, I've heard all these arguments out there about it or, or now they can make them, you know, in a lab and there's lab created versus, you know, real and just the difference of what somebody wants and what lab because sometimes like, you know, anyway, it's a whole argument, right? But for Rolex, or at least let's just, let's just stick with that one. The Rolex are like these top three watches. They have performed as an asset. Better than damn near most things. I mean, I think the only thing I could think of that's been more sturdy or steady has been like real estate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Why is that? Well, you know, there's always so much they manufacture per year. Right. You know, pre, I mean, with, there's a lot of things like that, you know? Like a lot of things only get manufactured per year. So why rule it? Yeah, so, I, you know, I feel like in the last couple of years, there's been a, there's been a big... Um, there's been a big shift between the people that are making a lot of money and those that aren't. Um, I think there's been... I think that gap has widened a little bit. Um, for Thank a lot you. of reasons yeah. and uh, you know the, the people especially young people new tech money there's a lot of different you know young people that have come out of the college you know space and, and built businesses that have new money I should say yeah um, but again there's always so much inventory out there and, and people you know people have always loved watches obviously right. nice time pieces um, but when it comes to really rare special pieces uh, there's only so many out there and there's a lot of people that wanted their hands on them. You know, the, the mark, the price, the, the watch market has come down a little bit, but it's still very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, we're still very, very busy. Um, but I, I, you know, I think it's something that people have taken a real liking to. I think it, it, it they, they have been incredible investments. I've got a lot of clients that um, bought a lot of pieces um, at the right times and unsold at the right times. I've seen people make a lot of money just trading watches um, with me and with other dealers and stuff like that. So, it's definitely a really interesting, uh, it, it's an interesting uh, recent uh, uh, events that has happened with the watch market, uh, but it's been really, really exciting. Yeah. Would you say Rolex is king or would you put p p uh, Paddock at the top? I, well, as far as overall top of the line, you know, to me, Paddock is like Rolls Royce. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. um, where Rolex is like uh, maybe Mercedes, but, you know, but they're, they're so well known, right? Not everyone knows where Paddock is. Listen, let me, let me clarify it. Okay. In, in in the watch world, no. Rolex is king. Okay, right. Rolex is king. Right. Yeah. Rolex is king. Yeah, not, uh, I love Rolex. I've always loved Rolex. Um, they're an incredible company. They make unbelievable timepieces, all different variations for different type of people. Um, and the quality has never diminished. No, they've the, never not had amazing quality. Rolex is incredible, but they. Yeah. I deal mostly with the big four. Now I deal with all sorts of brands. I can do anything, but if for the most part, uh, Rolex, um, AP. 
uh, paddocks and RMs. Right. And um, those are the big, that's considered the big four in the watch world. Um, but is it big four? Is it really big three? Because RMs, that's what I want to talk about. Is RMs, that's a pretty new brand. How new is that brand? That's pretty new. I think, I want to say it's around 10 years old, give or take. It's a little bit older, but I think it really started to boom like about 10 years ago. Right. But it doesn't really have the foundation of like a paddock or like, or even Rolex, it, right? It doesn't, but listen, I, I've never been a huge RM guy just because I didn't completely understand the brand. They're beautiful watches. They're right. made incredibly light. They're really unique. They're, they really are. Listen, they're incredible timepieces. Um, they're very expensive timepieces for the most part, right. um, but the brand has sustained. It, it, it's continued to grow, and uh, I don't think I, I. There was a time years ago where I didn't think it would sustain. Really, uh, but I. But I, I've been proven wrong. It seems that it's it's here to stay forever, and they're continuing to develop new timepieces, different styles, and people just seem to really love them. But I mean, I guess it makes sense as generations change. You know, new new products come out, right. um, but they they definitely deserve to be consider it up there with the big four really yeah they do and in the space of only 10 years that's impressive to be able to accomplish that yeah yeah, yeah. again i think they're a little bit older but I, the real big boom was about 10 years or so. right right well okay so for i mean but then there's those new watches that look just like our app yeah. and obviously there's knockoffs for everything right yeah. um and people have argued because i know a lot of entrepreneurs like oh yeah again i talk to entrepreneurs mostly so I, i'm not really you know having full book conversations with the whole spectrum of people who like these watches but a lot of them are now making the argument like ah, this one it's just the same. It feels like the RM. I'm like, I don't know about that, but if it's the same or like they're feeling similar, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to replicate a Rolex, right? Be just because the foundation of a Rolex is like everyone can spot or everyone can at least understand what is not a Rolex. I mean, maybe to the, yeah, man. Yeah. Right? but for an RM, since it's so new, you know, like, like, you know, Hublot, I know everyone hates Hublot, right? But they've gotten those watches that kind of look like an RM. And I'm not talking about those specifically. There are other ones that are almost replicating it exactly. Yeah. Right? Is Does that have an effect on it? I, I don't know if it has an effect on it. You know, everything in life, you're going to get, you're, you're going to have people that come out and try to make something that looks similar right. because there's, there's, there's markets for everything, right? There's people that unfortunately can't afford to spend three, four hundred thousand dollars on a watch, so they want something that looks similar, and they're okay with that, and and, and that's great. Yeah. Um. And so there's going to be people that take advantage of that market. Um. And I think that's it's like that for anything, right? I mean, you have some people that buy a car that's just a decent everyday car, and they put a full kit on it, and it looks really different, right. but it's really just the same car, right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, what's next for you then? Because I mean, like, it's it's fascinating to see you've actually built something incredible with your brand and your business. But I'm curious on where you see this going in the future. Do you see yourself leaning more into the brand with the, uh, the sports and getting more than that? Or do you see yourself fully just, you know, continuing in the, in the, in the jewelry sector? Like, what's the next step for you? That, that's a great question. So I, I will always be a one-stop shop, timepieces, engagement rings, custom jewelry, everything from studs to tennis bracelets, necklaces, and so on. Yeah. Um, but I've always had a vision of, for example, uh, Hair cutteries or, or, or haircut places, barbershops, right? There's sports clips. Mm -hmm. What what's sports clips? It's just a barbershop, yeah. right? But they put TVs on the wall, they put ESPN on yeah. up there, they put sports things on, and they cater to the sports world. Yeah. Um, that's kind of always where I've envisioned my company going. I, I'm a big sports guy. I love sport, played sports my whole life. Um, and I've always had the vision of continuing to grow, not only within the NHL community, but in the sports world. I have a lot of clients from all major sports leagues, um, which is incredible. And um, I've always envisioned myself, again, continuing to grow within the sports world and, and kind of marketing that way. Um, I, I think it's a unique space. I don't think anyone's really done it that way. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people, obviously, in the country and, and the world that are diehard sports fans. And I think if I can continue to capture that audience and, and to do it right and do it the right way and, and the honest way, I think I'll continue to get there. But eventually, uh, another one of my goals is to become the official jeweler of the NHL. I think that would be an incredible title for me. Um, but again, I've really only started to rebuild myself in the last four years or so. And so uh, it's, an, it's an everyday thing, yeah. but it's, it's, the ride has been, it's been incredible ups and downs, but it's, it's been a great ride so far. And I'm, I'm really excited for the future. I think I'm just scratching the surface. I, I feel like you have too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you still, you keep going with what you're doing right now. It's, it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, man. So. Yeah, man. I'm excited to see where you end up, brother. Yeah, man. We spent some fire on this podcast, dude. I mean, this is incredible. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, love learning more about your story because, like, you know, it's cool to see, like, okay, where you've ended up. We could talk about that forever. I, I love hearing about the journey that you went through to get there. 
honestly, I love hearing about the failure, man. I love that, right? It's, it shows me somebody that has gone through hell, yeah. right, in order to get where they want to be. And there's a famous quote I heard that has stuck with me. Is they say the path, the path to become a legend just goes straight through hell. So I did love point, that. At this point, you become an NHL legend, but you you went through hell to get there, brother. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate having me on the podcast. This is incredible. And uh, yeah, uh, maybe we'll do this again soon and uh, we'll catch up. Yeah, that would be yeah. incredible. Well, if there's one thing you want to leave our audience with, what would it be? Uh, it would be that, um, again, as far as business related, um, anything anybody needs jewelry-wise, engagement rings. Uh, my, I, like I said before, my company is is based on transparency, making sure that you're getting the right products uh, for your money, making sure things are desirable, good quality, well-built, uh, the right pricing, wholesale pricing. That's that's what I do. I, I make sure that my clients are always happy. I get taken care of properly. When when someone understands um, really what, they, what, what they've what they purchased and how they purchased it, and they, under, they start to understand that world a little bit, um, they tend to you know put your name out there a little bit more and uh, that, that's kind of what I'm striving to do is continuing to be an honest jeweler. Um, the jewelry space, you know, can be a little, there's can be a lot of gray areas in a lot of different ways. Um, but the business I've grown and the jewelry I build is designer quality. The same thing you get at straight desi uh, at designer uh, stores, the big brands. Yeah. Uh, I do the exact same thing at a fraction of the price. And uh, awesome. I'm proud to do it, man. I, I, that little singles, I ask for referrals in return. I, I sleep well at night. I know I didn't screw anyone over, and that's a good feeling. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, dude, thank you so much for the time. time. No, this is awesome. No, thank you. Now, everybody, go make sure you listen to this guy. Go follow this guy on Instagram. On you know, Check out his website. What's the best place people can get it in Tonga? Yes. So my website is LarryFlowers.com, and uh, the best place to find me, and you can DM me, is uh, Larry Flowers Jewelry on Instagram. That's kind of where I sit all day. Uh, replying to people and doing business. So uh, Larry Flowers Jewelry on Instagram is where you can find me. That's the best place. And we'll link all that in the, in the bio beneath the video, guys. Make sure you go check this guy out, the future jeweler of the NHL. Hi, boy. <laughs> Thank you.